Hello everyone, I hope you are enjoying the Level Up series. In this series, I try to take one or two questions and go very deep into the concept. And if you are a physics lover, you will definitely love it. So today, again, I have a very interesting question which says, what is the maximum angle to the horizontal at which a stone can be thrown and always be moving away from the observer? Now to know this question or to understand this question, please pause this video and try to attempt it on your own. And I know you will be tempted to solve it using calculus, but there is an interesting method as well. So I'll be talking about that. But before I talk about that interesting method, let me take you uh, or go take you through a quadratic equation application in physics, which will be involved and utilized in this particular question. So you must have seen quadratic equation multiple times in physics. So quadratic equation, for example, uh, the vertical motion uh, what you know that in vertical motion the quadratic equation it can be written down as ut plus half a t square where a is termed as minus g if we take the upward direction as positive and therefore the equation will become equal to ut minus half g t square Okay, where u is the initial velocity and y is the position of the particle uh, along the vertical direction. So now if I rearrange this and rewrite this whole thing, it can be written down as half g t square minus u into t plus y is equal to 0. Now clearly this is a quadratic equation in t which means it will have two roots of t such that sum of roots t1 plus t2 which we have already studied in quadratic equation is t1 plus t2 is minus b by a okay and in this case minus b by a will become u upon half g and therefore by rearranging it will be equal to 2u by g oh you have seen this right so 2u by g you have seen earlier and it was total time of flight in a vertical motion. So it clearly says that the two roots t1 and t2, their sum is equal to the total time of flight. And therefore I can say t is equal to t1 plus t2, which is equal to 2u by g. And what does this mean in this quadratic equation is when you throw a particle upwards. Okay, so let me throw this particle upwards with a velocity u. And when it is moving up and it is coming down at any position y. So let me just take any position y. I will take a position y. And at this position, when the particle is moving upwards, okay, when the particle is moving upwards, it will it will take some time t. Se. So it will take some time t1 from here to here. And T2 from here to here again when it comes back uh, to this particular position. So T2 is the time uh, which is from here starting to again when it reaches uh, the Y position. And therefore T1 plus T2, T1 plus T2 will be equal to 2U by G. So this is how roots are defined. At the maximum position, so if Y is equal to maximum height, it will, uh, T1 will become equal to T2. And therefore, you can clearly say that uh, T1 uh, plus T2 or T1 is equal to T2 at maximum height. And at that time, it will be equal to U upon G. Okay. So at maximum height, at maximum height. So these are the few concepts which can be applied. Another application of quadratic equation. I hope you have understood it. And similarly, you can also see sometimes very interesting fact comes out of it that T1 into T2 will be equal to T1 into T2 is uh, the sum of roots uh, or sorry product of roots and it can be written down as C by A and it will be equal to Y upon half into G and therefore it will be 2Y by G and using T1 plus T2 and T1 T2 you can calculate T2 minus T1 mod because whichever is greater I will subtract from it and you can sub you can find this time the difference between when it is moving up and it comes back to the same position, you can find the time uh, difference between that and you can calculate using uh, T1 plus T2 and T2, uh, T1, T2. 
and this is your homework please write down in the comment box how did you solve it another application of quadratic equation can be in in the use of projectile motion so you must have studied projectile motion and in projectile motion you write down the range or uh, the equation of the path as y is equal to x tan theta minus g x square upon 2 u square cos square theta this is how you write down the equation of the trajectory or equation of the path of the projectile motion now here you can clearly see this is a quadratic equation and this is a quadratic equation two variables so let let us first write rearrange this and write down the equation g upon 2 u square cos square theta x square minus tan theta x plus y is equal to 0. So one way of writing this quadratic equation is in this format wherein you can see that if theta and u are known so you can write down this quadratic equation in terms of x okay. So clearly when theta is known you can uh, write down this quadratic equation in x in this particular format and you can clearly find out sum of roots or product of roots and that is your homework you can do it but i was just trying to say that how it is applied in uh, quadratic equation is applied in uh, physics as well the another format which is sometimes extremely critical and important is when y and x is given to you or known to you and in that case what you do is if we i want to rearrange this i can write down this as y is equal to x tan theta minus g x square upon 2 u square and cos square can be written down as 1 plus tan square theta and therefore you can see when y and x are given to you which means let's say if a particle passes through certain point in that in that case y and x is known to you and the equation becomes a quadratic in forms of in form of variable theta and you can rearrange it and write down as uh, g x square upon 2 u square uh, i can say it will be equal to tan square theta minus x tan theta and then i will have y plus g x square plus 2 u square so this is a quadratic equation in this format and you can solve it whenever x and y are given to you so interesting thing and therefore quadratic has a lot of application in physics uh, especially in kinematics especially uh, in uh, motion in 1d and 2d you can apply it multiple times and a lot of difficult questions can be solved using quadratic so i hope you found this concept interesting and now let's move back to our original problem okay the original problem said uh, that find the maximum angle to the horizontal at which a stone can be thrown and always be moving away from the observer okay in this question let us take few cases now if i take a vertical motion case what happens there if i take a vertical motion case a particle moves up 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 so it is moving away from the observer so if you are sit, uh, standing or sitting at the origin it is the particle is moving when it is moving up it is moving away from you and when it is actually coming down the distance between you which is observer and the particle is reducing and therefore it is not always moving away from the observer so let's increase the angle a little bit so when i increase this angle a little bit here the particle clearly is moving up 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 away away and here it might seem it is moving away but now the distance you can see here it is lesser than this particular distance and therefore it is coming closer to you closer to you closer to you so clearly it it says that there are cases wherein particle will be coming closer to you so how to understand and how to approach this problem one way is very simple you find x you find y you actually find then position uh, by actually adding x square plus y square which is a variable in time 
and then differentiate it with respect to time and that is a conventional method. Now, can you think of a very interesting method here? An interesting method can be, let's look at the position vector, okay? Let's look at the position vector. Let's say this is the position vector and let's look at the velocity vector, okay? So here, if you look when it was away, moving away, you look at the velocity vector. Velocity vector is this. Now here, velocity vector is this. And clearly you can see when it is actually decreasing, the angle between velocity vector and the position vector, when it is decreasing, the angle between the velocity vector and the position vector becomes acute. Okay, the angle is acute. And clearly, if it is increasing, if let me draw another case and let me draw a case like this. Okay, let me draw a case like this. Here in this case, you clearly see if this is the position vector, the velocity vector is making an angle which is obtuse. Okay. And obviously here it is making an obtuse angle and you can see the distance is increasing away and it is away from you. So now if I use this concept, it the problem will become very, very easy. So the concept says that if R, which is the position vector, and if V, which is the velocity vector at any point of time, if the product dot product or scalar product of R and V is greater than zero, is greater than zero, which means uh, the angle is obtuse between R and V, then in that case, the distance or the R vector will keep on increasing. It will never decrease. And that also we studied somewhere in uh, acceleration and velocity, which I will discuss later on in some uh, other concept. But here you can clearly see if two vectors dot product is greater than zero, which clearly indicates that this vector R is always increasing and it is not decreasing. And now I can solve this question in an easy, easy peasy lemon squeezy way. Um, R vector can be written down as u cos theta. You can say uh, x is equal to u into t. So u x t i cap. This is the position vector plus u sine theta into t minus half g t square j cap. This is the position vector dot the velocity vector which is equal to u cos theta i cap plus u sin theta minus gt j cap the dot product of these two and this will be greater than zero so clearly what we have is i can solve this so it will be i dot i so i dot i is one u square cos square theta will be the first term into t and then this is multiplied i dot j is uh, 0 and therefore j dot j will become u square sine square theta into t minus half g t square u sine theta and then we will have uh, minus g t square u sine theta and then we will have plus half g square t cube and this is greater than zero. Okay. So now let's actually go here and solve this. What we will have is this is u square into t minus uh, if you look at this g t square. So minus 3 by 2 g t square g t square we have u g t square u sin theta and uh, plus half g square t cube is greater than zero. So now t t t this square is gets cancelled and what we will have what we have to find. So this is a quadratic equation. You can clearly quadratic expression rather because equation is when it is equal to zero. It will be equal to half g square t square uh, and then we will have minus 3 by 2 g u sin theta 
into t plus u square is greater than zero and if a quadratic expression is greater than zero if a quadratic expression is greater than zero then the roots are not real okay and this is a very important concept that if quadratic equation if quadratic equation is quadratic expression is greater than zero which means the roots are not real okay so let me just rearrange it and let me solve it again so here if i say that roots are not real which what does it mean it means let me just solve it discriminant is less than zero and what is the discriminant discriminant is and i have used the quadratic equation uh, funda which i just told you right so what will happen is 9 by 4 b square which is 9 by 4 g square u square sine square theta um, now this minus 4 u square into half g square is less than 0 so u square g square u square g square this gets cancelled and therefore sine square theta is less than 8 by 9 because 4 this gets cancelled 2 4 into 2 8 by 9 and clearly i will get sine theta is less than under root of 8 by 9 or i can say this is equal to i i can solve it or i can leave it it will be 2 root 2 uh, 2 root 2 by 3 okay so this is how or 2 by root 3 i can easily uh, put it like this oh sorry 2 root 2 it's my bad so it is simply 2 i can leave it like this okay so sine theta is less than 8 by 9 so clearly you can see and appreciate that a difficult problem can be solved in a much much easier way if you follow and follow the concepts deeply but physics is so very interesting and it is actually it has so many angles to it you can solve it in multiple ways the way you visualize and of course the conventional method is always there to help you out uh, but i always will challenge all of you if you are preparing for olympiad or je advanced to think it in a very very different way and try to open up your mind to solving physics in a very unique way okay i hope you have liked this session please give me a thumbs up please uh, share it with as many friends as possible and uh, Write down in your comment, how did you find this video? Uh, if you like it, uh, I will keep making such videos in the future as well. And let's learn physics with me, Anand Prakash, co-founder of Vedantu, in a very interesting and in a very fun way. See you for the next question. Okay, bye-bye, take care. And in the meanwhile, you can join uh, the Telegram channel, V underscore VAP. Uh, me and Pulkisar keep sharing a lot of content there. Thank you.